Drew Boyd, Inside the Box, A Proven System of Creativity for Breakthrough Results. Are you seeking creative breakthroughs and innovative ideas? Dive into the world of Inside the Box, A Proven System of Creativity for Breakthrough Results by Drew Boyd. This book guides readers through a systematic approach to unleash their creativity and generate novel solutions to complex problems. You'll discover the power of breaking away from conventional thinking and embracing constraints to uncover truly unique ways of solving problems. Enriched with real-world examples and practical advice, this book offers a comprehensive understanding of the tools and techniques of inventive thinking for anyone seeking to revolutionize their work or personal life. Understanding Global Macro Investing Global macro investing is an investment strategy that involves leveraging macroeconomic principles to make market predictions based on worldwide economic conditions. Hedge fund managers identify unusual price fluctuations and make leveraged bets on equity, currency, interest rates, and commodity markets. Global macro trades can be directional or relative, and the goal is to produce superior risk-adjusted absolute returns. While global macro investing is still relatively new, it has proven to be a good addition to a portfolio seeking strong risk-adjusted returns, with an average annual return of 15.62% from 1990 to 2005, double the earnings of the S&P 500 index, and with less volatility. The Art of Global Macro Investing Learn from the successes and failures of global macro investors like John Maynard Keynes, Alfred Winslow Jones, George Soros, and Julian Robertson. The global macro strategy remains relevant today, but it has evolved over time, with the emergence of smaller and more diverse funds. Global macro investing, pioneered over a century ago by economist John Maynard Keynes, involves investing according to worldwide macroeconomic conditions. Although the investment patterns and vehicles have changed over time, the strategy has remained relevant. One successful global macro investor, Alfred Winslow Jones, created a 20% profit-sharing arrangement that remains the pattern for most hedge funds. This fee was derived from the 15th-century Venetian practice of rewarding successful merchants with 20% of their profits. Success in global macro investing does not guarantee future success. Investors like George Soros and Julian Robertson have experienced enormous gains, as well as significant losses. Although involved in significant global events like the stock market crash of 1987 and the Asian crisis in 1997, global macro investors have not been responsible for these world events, but rather have exploited the underlying conditions. The collapse of the DOT.com bubble in 2000 resulted in the closure of many hedge funds, including Tiger Management, but the global macro strategy remains prevalent today. To succeed in global macro investing, one must learn from past mistakes, reduce errors, and respect the market. Ego has no place in this volatile investing arena, and admitting when one is wrong is essential. Expert global macro traders have unique points of view regarding this investment style, despite the emergence of smaller and more diverse global macro funds in recent years. The Art of Global Macro Investing Jim Leitner, founder of Falcon Management, emphasizes the importance of opportunistic investing by considering every asset and country. He suggests reading widely about global news and developing enough knowledge to build a trading strategy. Leitner advises against investing emotionally and instead treating trades as probabilities. As an experienced trader, Leitner notes that his business day does not interfere with his personal life. Leitner's global macro investing approach combines a broad view of countries with a narrowed focus on companies. Subscribing to The Economist is one of his recommended resources for keeping up with global trends. From impoverished student to trading legend. Christian Shivajathi, the owner of an investment company, didn't plan on becoming a trader, he stumbled upon it by attending Citibank's presentation for free drinks while studying at the London School of Economics. This chance encounter sparked Shiva Jathi's passion for trading, leading him to a successful career. The lesson he learned at Goldman Sachs is that new traders should have humility, maintain their composure, protect their integrity, 
and possess both talent and luck. Now, as a manager, he values experience and strong character traits in potential employees. Market position matters. Dr. Andres Drobny, a former academician turned active trader, stresses the significance of market position when selecting investments. Looking at past trends up to five years old provides valuable context, but using the past to predict the future leads to noise and confusion. With everyone searching for bubbles to exploit, it's important to avoid overconfidence in potentially overvalued assets. Critical thinking and understanding the underlying process of a viable trade are vital in discerning a good risk-reward ratio before trading. Approaches to handling interest rate risk Dr. John Porter of Barclays Capital in London suggests two approaches to interest rate risk, mitigating it or capitalizing on it. While the former addresses the risk, the latter involves taking advantage of it. Porter adopts the latter approach by gathering instruments with interest rate risks as these markets are zero-sum games. However, he warns against the risks involved and suggests the book, When Genius Failed by Roger Lowenstein, as an object lesson of being on the losing side despite one's intelligence. The Role of Luck in Trading Dr. Sushil Wadwani, a former central banker turned trader, believes that luck plays a significant role in trading, contrary to popular belief that hard work and diligence are the only determining factors of success. Wadwani suggests that central banks should prevent bubbles from forming, rather than dealing with the aftermath of a burst. He also predicts gloomier scenarios for the future of the U.S. due to its significant fiscal imbalances. Peter Thiel, From PayPal to Global Macro Investing Peter Thiel, the co-founder and former CEO of PayPal, transitioned into global macro investing due to his diverse skill set. As a macro fund manager, Thiel believes in broad thinking and focusing on opportunities outside of the norm. To succeed in this field, one must have expertise in math, economics, and history, and a genuine passion for quantitative models. Yura Harris, Lessons from a Merck Trader Yura Harris, a trader on the Chicago trading floor since 1977, shares his story of struggle and success. With his own badge and no MBA, Harris overcame obstacles to become a currency arbitrager and eventually start trading his own money. Despite doubts about his talent, he has shown his expertise in navigating the markets. Harris's story serves as inspiration for those pursuing a career in finance with a non-traditional background. Outsmarting the Market with Jim Rogers Jim Rogers co-founded the Quantum Fund in 1962, which made a stellar return of 4,200% in just 10 years. Renowned for his investment prowess, Rogers advises investors to move their money out of the dollar and into commodities and non-US dollar assets. He disdains marketing gimmicks like global macro and small cap. While Rogers always bets against bubbles, he acknowledges the difficulty of predicting timing. Be prepared, as a market shakeout is on the horizon within the next decade. Discover his unconventional, yet successful investment philosophy in adventure capitalist and investment biker. Osprey Management's Investing Strategy Dwight Anderson, formerly of Robertson's Tiger Management, has achieved immense success as founder of Osprey Management Hedge Fund through investing in commodities and basic industries. Anderson's approach emphasizes a focus on crucial market fundamentals, where he scrutinizes and analyzes markets in great detail. When building his team, he values intelligence, work ethic, pride, ability, and passion. The Investment Wisdom of Scott Besant Equities trader Scott Besant honed his investment strategy after working for industry legends such as Jim Rogers and George Soros. His approach is grounded in extensive research and analysis before making investment decisions in the equities market. Besant left Soros fund management when changes in risk-taking impacted the company, and he acknowledges the inherent risks in both long and short positions. However, he subscribes to Soros' philosophy and believes in being as big as possible when he's right. Marko Dimitrijevic on Investing Marko Dimitrijevic, CEO of Everest Capital, advises investors to use historical information carefully and notes the growth opportunities in developing countries. 
Dimitri Jevic started with a few hundred dollars in a REIT that returned 10% in three months and now manages over $1.5 billion. He questions the euro's status as an alternative to the dollar, citing a 30% increase over a three-year period rather than its true value. London Diversified Fund Management David Gorton and Rob Standing manage the London Diversified Fund quietly and use mathematical models to earn successful returns based on relative value. They balance this approach with global macro investments, providing a range of investment options. Although they have achieved high returns, they describe their methods as bloody arcane rubbish. After venturing into the depths of inside the box, you now have the necessary tools to transform your creative capabilities and conquer problem-solving challenges. By embracing the book's systematic approach and harnessing the power of constraints, you can generate breakthrough ideas both in your personal and work life. As you continue to apply these inventive thinking techniques, you'll gradually carve out an innovative mindset and enter into a new world overflowing with possibilities. The book leaves you with a fresh, invigorated perspective guiding you to think smarter, innovate better, and truly unlock your creative potential.